to Jamaica's abortion legislation. The consultations are put on by the Joint Select Committee of Parliament. I just want you to be actively involved. I want you to, to participate so that we can have some fulsome discussion and the committee have something to mull over. Minister Spencer was speaking at the first island-wide consultation held at the Montego Bay Civic Center recently. Two more consultations are planned. After that, the Parliamentary Committee will assess all the recommendations and make its own proposals to inform a national abortion law. The World Health Organization, the WHO, estimates that there are 35 illegal abortions for 1,000 women in Jamaica annually. Illegal abortions are seen as a major contributor to the increase in maternal debts over the past eight to ten years. The review of existing legislation has been taking place since 1975. The Ministry of Justice is considering taking its legal aid fair island-wide after some 300 people came out for the event on Saturday. People came from as far away as St. Elizabeth and Clarendon to seek legal information at the Rani Williams Entertainment Center in St. Andrew. Minister of Justice and Attorney General Senator Dorothy Lightburn says a strategic plan is being undertaken to improve access to justice for Jamaicans. At the moment, legal aid is really for criminal matters and it is really a matter of financial constraints. But as we go along, we are working because there are civil matters that also need legal aid. More than 10 organizations were represented at the legal fair each entity fielding questions from the hundreds of participants. In short order, the Justice Ministry will make a decision as to which parish will next host the Legal Aid Fair. On Saturday, the event went two hours beyond its scheduled 12 p.m. cutoff time. Presenters had to field questions dealing with child maintenance, criminal matters, and land ownership, among others. And those were the stories making the news today. For more information, please visit our website at www.jis.gov.jm. Stay with us. Jamaica Magazine continues. Broken homes, broken people, desolation, desperation. Just 300 miles away, our brothers and sisters in Haiti are crying for help. Our help, your help. Join the JIS and the ODPEM as we collect canned food and other non-perishable items for the earthquake victims in Haiti. Their lives depend on it. Leave your donations at the JIS, 58A Halfway Tree Road, Kingston 10, Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Or take your gifts to the ODPEM, 2 to 4 Haining Road, Kingston 5, Monday to Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. And Sundays, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Or make cash donations at any branch of NCB, account number 212387304. Together we can make a difference. Together, we can help Haiti. Jamaica Magazine continues Rewind 2009 now with a review of the events in the Ministry of Transport and Works last year. Roads and an effective transportation system are integral to the development of any nation. Last year, the Transport and Works Ministry made several strides in these areas. Today, we focus on some of the major achievements of the ministry in 2009. In 2009, the Ministry of Transport and Works continued to improve and modernize the service provided by the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, the JUTC. In January, 50 new Volvo buses were added to the company's fleet. The buses were handed over to the Ministry by J.R. Wellington Import-Export Corporation, local agents of Belgian bus makers VDL Jonker. Minister of Transport and Works Michael Henry said the buses would support the new standards being introduced into the public transportation sector. The introduction of new buses, which I think is one of the 
feathers in the cap of many things overall. It shows that a dignity can be added to transport. Complementary to the acquisition of new units and in seeking to improve the service provided by JUTC crews, the ministry continued to intensify training for the company's personnel. In March, a state-of-the-art bus driver simulator was installed at the Caribbean Maritime Institute CMI at Palisades Park in Kingston to enhance the JUTC driver training program. The simulator, valued at 1.1 million euros, is part of a joint project between the governments of Belgium and Jamaica. In 2009, the JUTC also continued to promote its cashless system as it pushes for increased use of the JUTC smart cards. We are of a concern of having cash on the bus. Cash on the bus creates opportunity for theft, creates an opportunity for harm to passengers and to the, the staff of the JUTC. Cash on the bus does not give us the control of revenue collection that is required, which is so urgent and necessary. Last year, Jamaica was re-elected to Category C of the International Maritime Organization IMO Council for 2009 to 2011. The election was held at the 26th IMO Assembly in London. Minister of Transport and Works Michael Henry, who headed the Jamaican delegation, said it was a significant achievement for Jamaica. On cruise ship development, in September last year, the House of Representatives approved a government guarantee loan of 121.65 million U.S. dollars to enable the Port Authority to proceed with the construction and development of the Falmouth cruise ship terminal. When completed, the terminal will be able to accommodate Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, RCCL, and Genesis class of vessels, which represent the largest cruise ships in the world. In 2009, the Ministry of Transport and Works continued with plans for the development of the Vernon Field Cargo Airdrome in Southwest Clarendon. In October, a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, was signed between the Port Authority of Jamaica and Surrey Paving and Aggregates, following Cabinet's approval of the joint venture project. The context of the Memorandum of Understanding, which Cabinet has approved, signed between the private developer who had paid for the studies of the economics of it, has been signed. The economic study is now being looked at in relation to ensuring that we are moving along the right stages. Under the MOU, the Port Authority is designated as the executing agency for the government. The redevelopment should be completed in five years. Moscabel expansion work was not put on the back burner. Last year, upgrading work was carried out at the aerodrome. We are moving along with the Bosco Bell expansion as a third port of entry, which is for private jets, which opens up the, that area of the island. The Ministry of Transport and Works continued to place major emphasis on its works portfolio throughout 2009. This is to improve the country's road network. In the 2009-2010 budget, some 479 million was set aside for the Ministry of Transport and Works Rehabilitation Project. Of this, the Road Rehabilitation Project 2 received 300 million for the upgrading of selected roads in Clarendon, Manchester and Westmoreland. Under the Community Road Patching Program, the Ministry of Transport and Works in August 2009 embarked on a major road patching program in the corporate area and some rural parishes. The program is geared at community roads that are in need of repairs. The program, which got underway in Havendale in St. Andrew, was carried out by the National Works Agency, the NWA. It involved an initial expenditure of $60 million. What we are doing is we have started patching the roads. Following the patching process, we must now make sure that we seal the roads. That sealing process is supposed to add five to seven years' life to the roads that we are looking at. 
In April, the government instituted the $8.75 cess on the price per litre of gasoline, with 20% of the money to go to the road maintenance fund to undertake road repairs.